G'day guys, how are you going? Looks like we found a warehouse. Now, I saw this one early days, you know, back a couple months ago when, when I was looking around Welshpool and Qdale and all that sort of stuff. Um, it was a good location and everything, but the photos on the internet, it was like, you know, they didn't want it to sell because it was the worst photos that you've seen. There was just rubbish on benches, there was dodgy offices, and there was containers and old cars, and it just, yeah, looked, looked terrible. So. At first, I didn't want to, yeah, didn't want to even go and have a look at it. But when I had a look at it, um, still had rubbish everywhere. But I thought, well, it's it's a lot bigger than than uh, I require. But it's got some, you know, pretty good bones to it. It's a it's a pretty good site. There's five different units on site and stuff. So, you know, I took my um, wife and my secretaries around to have a look, and yeah, my wife just hated it. She said it was too dark and dreary, and it looked like someone had been living there upstairs and stuff, and she was just hating on it already because how it is, but I was, you know, I sort of talked her off the edge and said, look, there's stuff we can do to fix all this, you know? So, um, anyway, we, we, we yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go and have a look. The mezzanine looked a bit dodgy to me. Um, it, you know, bounced a little bit. So I asked the uh, property agent um, if, if he could, you know, is it council approval or anything like that? And um, so he's he's went and, and spoke to the um, to the owner. And let's just say this guy's name's Harold. Harold wrote back, and he said, "Oh yeah, it's it's all legit. It's done by an old Italian mate of mine, and it's yeah, it's it's all to code. And he's used really good beams and all the rest of the stuff." So I said, "Okay, so I've I'm, I'm going to make an offer. Um, it's got to be subject to finance, of course. Also subject to building approval to see if it is up to code." And because I'd like to, you know, get it properly approved through council, and then the other thing there's there's a roof leak up the back too that that I'd like them to, to sort out. So they're they're the things that we're we're looking at anyway, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, little bit of a weird situation that I've got got in here. Um, we put an offer on the unit, okay, and I hadn't heard anything from two days from the agent. So I gave him a call and said, "What's going on?" Like. This unit's been for sale for a while, you know, because of probably the pictures that they have on the mm. internet. Um, I made an offer and now I haven't heard anything like, do they reject the offer or do they accept the offer or do they give us a counter offer? Like, it's, it's pretty easy, what's going on? And he said, oh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll call up the owner and see what's going on. And then um, he called back and said, yeah, the owner's got to check with his accountant or something like that. And I was like, okay, that sounds a bit weird. I thought, he, I thought he'd know what he wanted to sell it for. And then the next day the agent called up and said, I got some bad news for you, Ben. Um, the the unit has been taken over by the bank now. I was like, okay, what does that mean? He goes, well, you know, obviously the guy, uh, let's let's call him Harold again, wasn't paying his wasn't paying the mortgage or whatever it was, and so the bank's taken possession of. It. I said, okay, well, what happens to my offer? And he goes, well, it's they'll probably you, yeah probably have to forget about it now because what the bank really needs to do when it becomes like a mortgagee sale, they need to go to auction. They can't just sell it for whatever they want because the owner might say, well. You sold it for 50 grand less than what we could got in the real market and stuff. So, you know, now he said it's kind of had to go to auction. I was like, yeah, all right. Well, you know, I'll just, just keep looking around. There's, there's nothing available. So I was like, oh, well, you know, forget it. But then he called back the next day and then he said, the owner, Harold, is still willing to sell it to me. And I was like, what well, is he still in the picture? And, and he, so he was still in the picture. So he must owe the bank less than what he's going to get for it or something. I don't know. So weird situation. I said, okay. But he said, the only thing is that um, now the bank said, I have to remove all conditions like the council approval and subject to, you know, getting a structural engineer to check out the mezzanine and stuff. And I said, well, okay, well, I said, well, I'm not going to, you know, get rid of the subject to finance because you never know what they're going to bank, especially, you know, what the bank's going to do, especially with self-employed people with, you know, four dependents and stuff. They, they make it really difficult. Um, but I said, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to get rid of that. You know, the, the building inspection and the, and the, the council approval stuff. If uh, you know, but then I, I took about ten grand off it, and um, so I submitted the offer again without that, just subject to finance. And um, so you know, now now it looks like uh, you know I'll, I'll be able to. I think it'll get approval or whatever. But I don't know. I just haven't. There's not much in, around at the market, and this is a really good location for us. Um, you know. It's, Gives, gives me room to grow a little bit more if I need to, like a bit more room than we need to. So just got to sit back and, um, you know, hope the mezzanine's not, not too bad. And, uh, you know, the roof leak, leak and stuff I can fix, but anyway, I've just got to see how it pans out.